There was a guy I met once who deserves to get on the list of the top 10 worst Casanovas ever. The guy approached me. He didn't even try to find out if I was interested in the first place, which would have saved him time and effort. Just went into attack with the full force of an enthusiastic bulldozer. First, he told me that he was sad that day. When I forced myself to politely ask why, he gleefully replied that he just came back from his stepsister's funeral. And then, he reached for his phone and proudly showed me numerous pictures of his dead sister's corpse in a coffin. I was definitely impressed and entertained, but not in the way he wanted me to be. So, when he reached the maximum amount of time he was willing to wait for me to fall in love with him, about 10 minutes, he went on trying to charm my friend and then other girls, using the same strategy. All of them rejected him, so why would he keep doing it? The thing is that 1 out of 50 or 100 or any other sufficient amount of girls must have said yes, enough to fuel his enthusiasm and consider this easy technique worth the effort. And he didn't know any better anyway. One of the main distinctions between humans and animals is that a human is aware of being aware. But I guess some decided to wipe this privilege as a useless accessory. There are always more efficient and less disruptive ways to do something. But it would involve creative thinking, or at least just thinking. Considering all the conclusions that made him decide that showing his dead sister's body in a coffin would be a great strategy. How efficient is that? Probably as efficient as call center agencies that some businesses hired to sell something. In other words, not much. But it's not very expensive either, so why not? The thing is, aside from this guy, People do it all the time, sticking to some strategies and actions that worked once or twice or for some time in the past that don't work anymore, or perhaps not as often as they would like them to work. Like crying when they were five to attract a woman's attention. Yeah, but was their mom, now they're grown up. Nevertheless, it's fascinating how they'd rather say, well, you can have it all. Yeah, but that's not what they're usually trying to do. You can please everybody. Yeah, but the niche of girls who might enjoy seeing his dead sister in a coffin and have sex with him out of pity might be very, very restricted. I am the way I am. I can't change myself. What? They've never changed? Do they still poop in their pampers in their late thirties? There's too much competition. Is there too much competition? Or is it that their positioning skills suck? And perhaps they should work on that. Do they even realize that it's a skill that can be developed? And what are the real difficulties here? Yeah, they could ignore them, find billions of justifications, and then what? A potential alternative would be analyzing how they got to a point where to solve the problem, they created two new ones that are even worse. In which ways doing something is a good decision, and what are the cons? Perhaps it could be less time-consuming to find a different way? It might seem like a lot of work, and some might think that the numbers game with a 1% success rate is a better solution. like showing a picture of one's dead sister in a coffin. But what are the real goals here? Or in any other situation? Is that the only way to get a result? What's the bigger picture? How does this goal relate to other goals of one's life? And from this perspective, what else could be done? How much time and effort might one save or waste in the long run?